Hold on, let me fix this stupid thing. All right. All right, guys, what we're doing out here today is we're going to, we're going to try to do a review over the Ruger American Rifle. Now, this exact one right here is a Ruger American Predator. It's a lower caliber. It's a 223, but they do make just a plain Ruger American, and they're all practically really similar. So, I'm going to try to give you all a review over this. First thing I have to say about this, how much is this, Ethan? They have went up in price. Unfortunately. They used to, you could find those for like 350 Yeah. Now, they're about 489 What about the normal one? About 425 that's not that bad though still compared no. to guns overall everything's went up but that's still not a bad price and uh, i'm gonna tell you what i like about it and what i don't like about it we'll start at the front this one has a threaded barrel so whenever you upgrade to the predator versus the standard american you get a threaded barrel you maybe get a green stock as for the gun itself is that about the only thing that's different that's yeah that's it the stock and the threaded barrel and all of them come with a mag don't they yeah, they That's all one really cool thing about it. In case your mag breaks or something, it's a lot easier to just load them in here than it is to go in through the top. Now this one is a 223, so we will keep that in mind throughout the test. Besides that, this is a really, I believe, good looking rifle. Um, it feels pretty good. The action, look at this dude. It's got this uh, blue knob right here, pretty good. It does make that sound. I'm not even gonna lie. This is the smoothest action I've ever had. Even compared to my really expensive. As for the trigger, let's check it out real quick. I'll just pull it from down under. It does move a little bit. Does it matter that much? Probably not. We're going to shoot some with it today just to show you how it shoots. Honestly, I'm just going to tell you straight up front and center. For the money, I think this is probably one of the best rifles that you can get. We even put a stock on it, but we ended up taking it off because it made it super heavy. So we're going to go ahead and shoot it some. But here in a little bit, we have a pistol right there that we haven't even unboxed ourselves. We're going to unbox it by the end of this video and we're going to shoot it some. But anyways, we're going to do something a little cool too. We have some steel cased ammo. We have some really cheap steel cased 223 ammo. Then we have some really cheap brass cased 223 ammo and we're just going to see is brass really more accurate than steel or is it just the quality control because both of those are pretty cheap so we're we'll see that yeah first thing we'll just shoot steel we do have some targets set up down there like paper plates and we're going to shoot a, a three shot group of each and uh, see how they do this is probably the first rifle i bought myself and i have killed a deer with it even though 223 is not a good deer caliber it still killed a deer that might honestly be about it but i've shot it a lot feeds really nice good safety right here if you like that tally mounts are available for it here we go though put them on target we actually sighted this gun in to the steel case and we was hitting 600 yards very consistently with this steel case. We'll play that footage here in a second. Our first target is a little piece of steel right at 105 yards. This one should be easy. Ready? Yep. Easy. No problem at all. Moving on to about 168. So we're moving out 68 extra yards. This is a pretty good little shot. Oh, we missed. No, you got it. Really? Yeah, you hit it. I'll try again just in case. Okay. Hit. Okay, yeah. The same spot, too. Oh, that, that's easy money. Now, this is where the 223 or 556 five, is going to start showing itself a little bit. We're moving on out to 300 and above. Can it hit 300? Absolutely. Can it hit 300 easy? It should, but I'm going to have to hold high a little bit. It's starting to drop down from where it's sighted in at. This next target, right at about 287. So basically 300. All right, so for this first shot at 300, I'm going to hold dead in the center, and hopefully we'll be able to see the vapor trail on the slow-mo and see how much it drops. This is quite a shot right here. All right, I definitely missed. Couldn't even see where that one went. Now I'm going to hold a little bit higher. Hit that it. That time I hit it. I had to hold about three inches over the target, so one way or another, it dropped into the headshot size target. This is just a 223. That's a really small bullet. That's your average 40 cent bullet. Those over there, those cost me $2 each. Those should be able to hit that no problem. And honestly, those should be able to hit the 600 no problem consistently. Let's move on out to four. This one's about 365. This time I'm gonna hold on the head and see how much it falls down. I hit the target. Yeah. At 400 yards, it's not dropping any more than 20 inches. I'm going to aim about six inches above the head, and we're going to zoom in with the slow-mo so we can really see where it's hitting. Here we go. Boom. 
Boom. That's money. Those are dead center shots too. 475. With a 556, we're doing something right here. So far, I'm pretty impressed because out to like 389, was it? I've been hitting first shot pretty consistently. Mm -hmm. And just saying this, this is steel cased ammo. This is the cheapest ammo I could possibly find anywhere. I'm impressed with it. I'm happy. Now, here's what I do want to say. As we keep shooting, this barrel is notorious, or at least in my ownership, for uh, start throwing some flyers and not exactly holding perfect groups when we heat it up. So let's head on out to 570. All right, here we go. Hit. How did I hit that? I, I just know. guessed how high I'd have to aim and I ended up hitting it. We'll try another one. Is that a hit or don't know? No. I'm going to do a little calculations, then I'll get back to you guys. Actually, I'm going to take y'all with me to do the calculations. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get on my phone. I know the speed and grains and roughly the ballistic coefficient of that round right there. So what I'm going to do is type it into a ballistic calculator, and it should tell me at 475 how much should it drop, and then I'll hold over. Dude, these flies up here are going wild. <laughs> Told you. You're making... They're blue. That guy. Okay, just inputted the data for that weight of bullet, that speed, and that ballistic coefficient. Here's what I'm coming up with. Obviously, there's a lot of external factors that could make it a little bit different, but this is just a general estimate, okay? We're going to go way down here to 475. 475 is right there. Bullet drop is 17.2 inches. That ain't bad. We can do that. 17 inches. I know the target's 20 inches, so I just need to hold about half the target's length up to hit its center mass. We can do that. Look at me trying to sound smart. All right, here we go, though. I'm gonna hold about a half a target high. I'm using all my zoom right now. Hit. Hit it. This last one is way up there. Just show them on the camera and point to it. They ain't gonna be able to see it. It's, it's a, a little it's white It's right speck. at the tip of my finger. Just a little white speck. It's eh, right It's 565. There. 565, a little short than 600. We, we can't go back any farther. There's just a cliff right there. I'm going to pull up my calculator again because I need this. I mean, it helped us hit it first shot practically. Math is pretty constant. There's not a lot that can mess with math. 565, 25 inches. I need to hold. I need to pretty much aim one target high so that it can fall down and hit the middle. Send it. Oh, just low, just you're, low. You're literally just about maybe six inches low. Yeah, dude, I, because it takes so long for the bullet to get there, I had time to deal with the recoil and then watch the bullet. So here we go. All right, that one's a little weird. You hit it. There it is. That's pretty much 600 yards with a 223 shooting the cheapest ammo I could possibly buy. So I'm just going to shoot the best I can. We're about 110 yards. All right, that's the three steel case. Now we'll move on to the brass case. A lot of people really don't like steel cased, but I like it because it's cheap. But look at these, dude. These might actually be high quality. I don't know. I forgot how much I paid for these. These might be really good. I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah, we're about to find out. The thing is with this scope I have, being super precise really isn't extremely possible. I can only see so much with the scope I'm given, so... All right, so we've sent them right through there. The brass is noticeably louder. Really? Yeah. It, it kicked a little bit less. One thing I did notice though, which is pretty interesting and pretty common, is that I didn't necessarily have trouble ejecting any of them, but I did notice that the steel case was a little bit, a little bit stiffer to eject. And that makes sense because uh, it's just a stiffer metal. Honestly, these are like four times more expensive than these. I'm buying these, dude. People can say that it may hurt their gun a little bit, but Man, this is a four. This is like a four hundred dollar gun. I can buy a whole new gun by the time I wear it out. Here's the problem I face: if you're just throwing ammo in, it likes to get caught. It likes to get caught where bottom bolt lug goes in, so you can't really just throw it one in. Or if you do, you gotta throw it kind of fast, I guess.
All right, let's go check them out. So from the steel, from the brass, I mean, you can see the steel. You're looking at a two and a half inch groove. Not terrible, honestly, for steel case 223. Even with the brass, now you're looking at a giant group. But at the end of the day, 100 yards, that's not a good group. I'm going to be honest. It's not that great. This one's a lot better. All right, here's the thing, though. I have came out here with some 223 ammo that was like $2.50 around. Freedom munitions very quality ammo and honestly i got about the same group as that what that means is that we've probably reached the limits of the gun so it's not a sub moa gun which is one inch at 100 yards maybe it's a two moa gun but for 500 dollars, 400 dollars, that's not bad and you gotta think if you're shooting at a deer you're just trying to hit the plate like if you can hit this plate you can kill a deer if you're trying to shoot a coyote if you can hit this plate you can kill. Now, what you gotta understand is this is the group at 100 yards. At 200 yards, it's just gonna double. You're still within the plate. And you can get different calibers. Maybe you want a 6.5 that's maybe inherently a little accurate. And you can also get that gun in a ton of different calibers. And just as an example to show you how that gun can be accurate, this is the group at 100 yards. We were shooting this target right here at 600 yards. All right, guys, I'm looking at the stats of the gun right now. It comes in 30-06, 270, 308, 243, 7 millimeter 08, 308 again, and then 6.5 Creedmoor. And pretty much all those barrel lengths are 22 inches long, and then you can get the 6.5 in 26 inches. They're all gonna come in right around 6.13 pounds, right around that range. Maybe this scope's heavy, but this one feels a little heavy. But at the same time, it's not too heavy that you can't do stuff with. Of course, like I was saying, I have this one in 223. I think that's part of the Predator ruger american predator is that they go come with smaller calibers because with the predator they kind of made it smaller calibers so that you can coyote hunt with like 223 but now we're going to unbox this weapon right here which is a pistol it's ethan's gun so i'm gonna let him unbox it all right let's open it up we'll see what is it supposed to be a sig p320 m18 right. marine united states marine corps no duty issue pistol it is indeed the one. Brand spanking new, boys. All right. A booklet, literally. You got a patch, so you can put that on your blue jeans or something. A 10 mile long booklet in there. Two mags, I Two think. Two extended mags. Yeah, these are 21 rounders. What are those? 17 rounder. Yeah. Well, you got the bullets, you wanna shoot it? Let's shoot it. Let's see the sights. All right, pretty good sights. Nice sights, aren't they? Yeah, they're not sights. They're big, beefy boys back yeah, there. Yeah, and you got this uh, for an RMR if you want it. Yeah, and it's got a loading indicator up here. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's nice. It does feel good. It feels a lot better than a lot of things. We'll see how it shoots, though. Does it have a safety? Yeah. Wow. Not many guns come with safety anymore. No, they don't. Doesn't really make sense, but I guess. All right, let's send her out. Safety. It shoots pretty good. You shoot it. All right. It takes some used to getting to those sights where they're so thick. All right, here we go. The extended mag is very large. Let's see what we can do. Not bad. Do you think the sights take a little bit getting used to also? I do like them though. I like them big and bulky like that. They're thick. I like it. I do too. I did notice one thing about that compared what? to like my Beretta and stuff. That one's a little bit more jumpy than a Beretta. A little bit what? It likes to jump. Here's what I do think. I think a lot of people is going to get aggravated whenever they go to, to release the slide and keep pressing the safety thinking it's the slide release until they realize it's up closer. Let me try a few more shots. Like it. Do you? Yeah. Since this video is about this gun, let me send a few more with this gun. And I'm gonna shoot them in a realistic way. I'm gonna shoot them off-handed, standing up like this. Any gun should shoot good on bench rest, but holding it up like this, you'll get to see how balanced it feels and if it feels right. Which I did kill a deer like this right here, so that's a good sign. I'm gonna turn it down to about six power. I'm gonna shoot at about a 12 inch plate.
from shooting at that, I could probably kill a deer standing up it's like this at 100 yards. That's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Overall review, it's a really solid gun for what it is. Now, unfortunately, the price has gone up. So if it keeps going up, maybe it won't be a good gun for the money. But for now, I do believe it still is. Just going to put this out there. I have felt one in a pawn shop to where this was really messed up. And it was like... <clears throat> Like it was really stiff. That's not what they're all like. Most of them is like this. Really loose. And I like it to be loose like that. But anyways, guys, if you like this video, you may also like this video where we tested out the Weatherby Vanguard Meat Eater Edition or this one, which is my most expensive rifle. But it's a Christensen Arms Mesa. And it is still my favorite rifle, as it should be. Anyways, bye.